We are following breaking news in the beating death of Sacramento native Tyree Nichols. Just moments ago, the city of Memphis released new video that shows several angles of the violent arrest. It comes less than 24 hours after five officers were charged and arrested for second degree murder in the case. ABC 10 has had several discussions leading up to this video release and how we treat every piece of it photos, video, and sound on the confrontation that led up to Tyree's death. And we do have a warning tonight. This is graphic video, and it is very disturbing. 29-year-old Tyree Nichols grew up in Sacramento. Yeah, he was an artist, photographer, and enjoyed skateboarding around the city. He touched the lives of so many people, and so we do have team coverage tonight. But we want to start with ABC 10's Becca Habegger. I know you just saw the video, and it, you're breaking it all down for us. Yeah, Chris and Laura, you know, we are all in that news conference room watching the beginnings of, of what is essentially an hour-long video. Uh, the Memphis Police Department published the video of the January 7th traffic stop just about an hour ago now. The full video is a little over an hour long. It stretches across four videos from various body camera and different camera angles, but we've just begun to start watching all of it. Now, what we're going to show you is a still frame from the video. Uh, we are not yet showing actual video because we want to be judicious in what we show and how we show it. Uh, our goal is to strike an appropriate balance between giving context to what happened and understanding that this is very graphic video that some may choose not to watch in its entirety for a variety of reasons. What you're seeing here is a still image from the second of four videos. You see Nichols up against one of the squad cards there. This is just after police officers, a group of them, uh, were seen repeatedly hitting him, kicking him, using a baton to strike him. Uh, and then they put him over and pushed him against that uh, squad car where he is uh, sitting. Uh, we see several minutes pass with him in that position and the police officers are milling around the area. Uh, we don't want to give any additional context if we don't yet have it, but we've been watching this in real time. I and mean, we just walked out of the newsroom conference room where we are watching this. Uh, so this is sort of journalism and context giving unfolding in real time. You know, one important thing that we want to mention is we've been speaking all day, not only as journalists, but with leaders in the newsroom, community leaders about how to most responsibly and sensitively tell this story whether to show the video and if we do, how much of it do we show? You know, we know people who want to watch the full video can find it online and we do have it at abc10.com. But our goal as journalists is to give as much context as possible while limiting the harm we're causing by showing something so hard to watch. And you know, Chris and Laura, uh, these community leaders we talked with, they said this brings up the trauma, especially for members of the black community and the uh, here in Sacramento, they they referenced you know the the killing of Stephon Clark at the hands of Sacramento police officers. Of course, the 2020 killing of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, and so many others. So they say that watching this video for so many members of the community is a trauma, and that's why we want to be so careful in what we present. We know those officers in the Stephon Clark case were never charged with a crime. The Clark family had asked that they at least be charged. In this case, those officers have been charged. And not only that, EMT workers have been charged as well in this case. I know, again, you've got four hours of video that you've got to try to get through, Becca, to try and bring us back some perspective. So we thank you for this initial review of that video that has just come in moments ago. Yeah, thank you, Becca, for that. And we're going to have more information as well on our website, abc10.com. Keep in mind again, Tyree Nichols was a Sacramento native. He recently moved to Memphis in 2020. And that's right, and that's why our Devin Truby had a conversation with local stakeholders on what this means for Sacramento. Earlier today, I was able to speak with former Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hahn and community activist Barry Axias. Both are expecting a reaction from the Sacramento community and that this will be an instrument of change. The Nichols family calling for peace, but there is expected to be a reaction in Sacramento. I think it'll be mixed. All families are doing the right thing to call for, cause for peace. There's a lot of people right now currently just here in Sacramento that um, haven't got any bit of uh, comfort or resolve in their issues. Former Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hahn is expecting protests. People are uh, angry and at the root of that is trust in law enforcement and other governmental entities. And so protests has changed this country in more ways than one throughout history. Do you think this happened so quickly and has so much attention because these five officers are black? Yeah, they're expendable. Um, they have now truly realized that they don't bleed blue 
they are black. Chipan believes the horrific nature of this incident is the main driver, but race cannot be overlooked. But race is a big issue in this country. And so five African-American officers, sounds like assaulting an African-American person, um, brings up all sorts of emotions. In a press conference Friday morning, attorney Ben Crump says the swift response and action against the officers should be the new, quote, blueprint for how incidents are handled. We asked how realistic seeing a change like that could be in Sacramento. But any of these incidents are, none of them are the same. So to say you're going to do the exact same thing on each incident is not realistic. The same energy and the swiftness of um, action to fire and also relieve them of their duties without pay. We want to see that with other officers that are white when this thing happens. And while there is acknowledgement that it's not easy to be in law enforcement and they make split second decisions, this case is not that. This doesn't sound like it was a split second decision where I have to decide whether that person is trying to kill me or not with a gun. This is a situation where people physically fought with somebody to the point that they died. You said, I want to work as a law enforcement officer. I ain't never said I wanted to be black, I just came black. We have made both these interviews. Tyree had a passion for photography, and these images you see right here are from his website. Now, most of the photos he took are in Memphis showing his passion for capturing beauty, sunrise, sunset, and moments of his time in Memphis. And we do have video of Tyree. It shows him skating, actually here in Sacramento. There is a vigil at the skate park at Regency Park in Natomas scheduled for Monday of next week. And this all comes as many are already gathering on the streets here in downtown Sacramento right now, outraged by this brutal and deadly beating. And these protesters march from City Hall to the state's capital, demanding action and justice. ABC 10's Alicia Machado joins us live in downtown right now. A lot going on behind you, Alicia. Tell us exactly what's going on. Good evening, Laura and Chris. Ralliers are just wrapping up after marching through the streets of Sacramento, even shutting down 10th Street for about 20 minutes as they marched, calling for accountability and justice in Tyree's case. You can see a few of them are actually left here tonight. About two dozen people marching through the streets in, of Sacramento, saying they are standing in solidarity with Tyree. They say this is a movement, not a moment, saying that this needs to continue the calls for action in the days to come. Uh, we saw them as they were marching through the streets, shouting chants like no justice, no peace, Black Lives Matter. A rallyers say this march is symbolic. They are standing with the family, asking for justice. They want this taken further. They want a conviction. They want these officers to uh, face stricter punishments for this. Uh, even uh, Stefante Clark, the brother of uh, Stephen Clark, who was shot and killed by Sacramento police back in 2018, is out here marching, calling for justice. March actually marks five years since he was shot and killed by police. They plan to be out here again for that, but we will continue to cover this and bring you live updates throughout the night. Now, Alicia, uh, our audience members might have heard or seen online that um, Tyree's mom had expressed that she would like any protests to please remain peaceful. We'll check in with you again, Alicia. Thank you. Now, processing emotions in times like these are difficult for all of us, and especially for those in the black community who may have experienced similar trauma. The experts we've spoken with say the best thing that you can do to keep yourself healthy is to find help if you need it, even if it's just talking things out with a loved one. Now, on your screen are just a few, just a few of the local resources available that specialize in counseling members of the black community. If you need help, reach out. Do not hesitate. Don't wait. We have more options listed on abc10.com slash links. Meanwhile, we do have some more breaking news tonight, this time in Tracy. An officer has shot a person in the area of Mosswood and Foxtail Way. We want to take a live look now at Tracy, if we can here. We do know for right now that a road is blocked off the heavy police presence. Um, let me repeat that again. We don't have the live shot, but 
A road is blocked. There is a heavy police presence. We have learned a man was rushed to the hospital, Chris, and we don't know the extent of his injuries right now. Though. We can tell you, though, that our Devin Truby is on her way there to the scene as we speak, and we'll have more information for you tonight online and, of course, tonight on the news at 6 o'clock. We also have everything that we know so far about this story on our website, abc10.com.